think in the world today we have a lot of, dare I say, pride issues going on. Proud to be an American, proud to be fighting against what we see is wrong in the government, proud to get politically motivated, proud of our football team, proud of our children, proud of, of our country, proud of our servicemen, proud of, well, proud of being pride, you know, we're number one. What's wrong with being number two or three or four? I think there's an issue here that is being missed and God hates pride. It's not a self-esteem issue because God can build our self-esteem because he died for us. It's not a, a poor self-esteem that we need to have this false idea of being proud of ourselves because really, I don't know about you, but we really don't have anything to be proud about. And wipe the world out and made it in our own image and it's kind of pretty messed up if you look at it. it looks that way to me. It doesn't look like we're doing such a good job at quote unquote taking care of each other either. But I think in America especially we have this rebellious nature that just rears up and says, I I and as soon as you can say I and not he, then it, it seems to be pride. It seems to be what you can do and what you can work out and what you can accomplish. And it doesn't seem to get anywhere near what God has done and what God is doing. So I think, I think maybe this week that Calvary chapels are praying, some of them, Maybe they're right, you know, maybe, maybe we need prayer to fast and to think about this for a few days before really praying for ourselves, but maybe to fast and take some time to look at ourselves and see, hey, you know, I, I, I got a shoe here, you know, and it's a pretty comfortable shoe. You know, it's got nice tread. You know it. Doesn't stink yet. Ooh, maybe it does. Ooh, I smell something in it. You know what? I think the shoe is pride. And you know what's even worse? I think it fits. And what's even worse than that? I think I'm comfortable with it. Oh my God. Do you think maybe I have pride? <laughs> well, that's obvious. Of course I do. Okay. I'm glad that you can see pride in me. I'm glad that you know that I'm so full of pride. But can't you see the pride in you? Really? No pride? Really. We need to examine ourselves on a regular basis, I think, especially in, in these days that we live in, that so many things are like pushed at us to make us do this or make us do that. And then we kind of get a little bit involved and we think, oh, well, we're somebody special. Like Facebook is oh, so cool now or Twitter. We have so many tweets, you know, and friends and we get this kind of like slap on the back from people that we think is agreeing with us, but we really don't know them at all. As a matter of fact, I doubt that they know you even a little bit. The truth is, God knows us. God gave us something and someone to talk to us about this issue of pride and arrogance and there's anything that I really think is true about Americans is we're really an arrogant people. I mean, we go 
out of our way to hide our arrogance by doing good works. Don't get me wrong. We, we do a lot of wonderful things. You know, we help people out. You know, you put on a, a slick marketing commercial, you know, and yeah, we'll help you out, you know. But do we kind of like blast each other sometimes, you know, about what we think is right? Do we kind of make ourselves out to be judge and jury? have a strong opinion about what we think? Have we ever, like, given up our rights for someone else's opinion or right to be who they are? I think pride is dangerous, and I think it's the most dangerous thing that's affecting us now. I think it's a spiritual deception that's kind of like just really slipped into the church and it's just kind of like Ooh, went over the top because we have like mega churches and like mega ministries and mega money and we have people that say this and say that and we feel pretty good about ourselves don't we we really like our church we really like the things we're doing I think we're really an arrogant people I think we really need to look at our pride. I think we really need to talk to God about it. Because you see, if we deflate ourselves now and humble ourselves, if we let the air out of our own self-worth and self-esteem that we think we need, if we kind of like, you know, recognize that we're really just kind of disgusting and sinners saved by grace and that we're really in our flesh dwells no good thing, then maybe, just maybe, when we stand before God, we won't have our bubbles burst, you know, and wipe out really our, what we think is our witness before God. It might not be such a marvelous testimony after all. I kind of wonder if you're thinking the same thing too. Like, well, God, you know, if you show it to me, maybe I'll believe it. I don't know. You know, someone telling me I'm prideful, I don't think I believe it. Maybe you could ask God on your own, you know, to show you where you're prideful. Because I know that you know where I'm prideful. Or do you? We can help each other if we want to. We can get into with each other if we want to. We can ask the Holy Spirit to show us where we're failing if we want to. The bounty of the destitute, being justified freely by his grace. The gospel of the grace of God awakens an intense longing in human souls and an equally intense resentment. Because the revelation which it brings is not acceptable. There is a certain pride in man that will give and give, but to come and accept something freely given is another thing. I will give myself in consecration. I will do these works of righteousness. I will act holy. I will be made likened unto God. I will do anything, but do not humiliate me to the level of most hell-deserving sinner and tell me that all I have to do is accept the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Don't tell me that's all there is. Tell me what I need to do after I accept that. After all, there must be a catch. There must be something I must do. There must be works of righteousness which I can add to. Maybe not the salvation, but look good before God. We have to realize that we cannot earn or win anything from God. We must either receive it as a gift or do without it. 
The greatest blessing spiritually is the knowledge that we are destitute. Until we get there, our Lord is powerless to work in us, to work through us, and to work for us. He can do nothing for us if we think we are sufficient of ourselves. We have to enter into his kingdom through the door of destitution. As long as we are rich, possessed of anything in the way of pride or independence, God cannot do anything for us. We have to acknowledge that he is giving us something we cannot do for ourselves. It is only when we get hungry spiritually that we receive the Holy Spirit, when we want him. The gift of the essential nature of God is made effectual in us by the Holy Spirit. He changes our nature from that of which we were to that of what God is. He imparts to us the quickening life of Jesus, which puts the beyond within, and immediately the beyond, which has come within us, it rises up to the above, and we are lifted into the domain where Jesus is, because we receive that same spirit that God raised Jesus from the dead with, which is the Holy Spirit. Father, by whatever means and by whatever opportunity you have within your hands to reach down from heaven and to grasp our hearts and the reins of our own free will, I pray, Almighty God, you would do so and show us, tender Father, where we have failed where we have fallen, where pride and arrogance has taken us away from the sensitivity and the tenderness of your mercies that are new every morning that have been given to us to extend to others. God, I only ask you convict us for a few days so we know what it is about. And then, oh God, don't leave us there but bring back the Holy Spirit as comforter to show us where we can go from this conviction, from this confrontation of you revealing to us where we have been arrogant, where we have been prideful, and where we have missed the mark. God, have mercy on us, but God, show us, reveal to us, speak to us of this pride and arrogance issue that we might know we are in sin, that we can be forgiven of sin, and that you will take away our sin as far as the east is from the west, and that we need to let you let us know that we have indulged ourselves in pride and arrogance this day. And now we ask you to show it to us so we can let it go, to have your way to walk in the light as you are in the light.